All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's so nice to see familiar faces here in the audience. Welcome to all those that are joining us virtually, as well as all of you that are able to make it here in person. My name is Agam Patel, President of Staff Assembly, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our Winter General Meeting. We'd like to begin this meeting with UCR's land acknowledgement provided to us by Curtis Washington, a recent retiree of UCR's Mail Services Department and a professional voice actor. Uh, Curtis has been a friend of uh, Staff Assembly for many years, and we thank him for this. We at UCR would like to respectfully, we at UCR would like to respectfully acknowledge and recognize our responsibility to the original and current caretakers of this land, water, and air, the Kawiya, Tongva, Roseño, and Serrano peoples, and all of their ancestors and descendants, past, present, and future. Today, this meeting place is home to many indigenous peoples from all over the world, including UCR faculty, students, and staff, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to live and work on these homelands. Thank you, Curtis. A few important reminders before we begin. This meeting is being professionally live streamed by ITS's Multimedia Services Department, which includes uh, Noah Jones and Siddick, as well as our very own immediate past president, Jeff Giroux, who will be handling the chat feed. Towards the end of this presentation, we will have a fun raffle prize drawing, so we hope you can stick around for the full hour. But before I begin, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of you out there working each day to help further and keep this enterprise humming. Thank you for your various talents, passions, insights that you bring each day to help further this university's mission. Staff Assembly has been on this campus for decades, and it has a rich history of advocating on behalf of all of you. This year, we participated in the UC board, in the UC Regents meetings, both in person and virtually, where we were able to give public comment and help support the efforts led by the Council of UC Staff Assemblies. Next month, we'll be traveling to Sacramento for UCR's Advocacy Day, uh, March, uh, March 6th and 7th, uh, where we will get an opportunity to engage with our state and local elected officials. And speaking of March, by then it will be a time for our annual, third annual staff conference happening March 28th and 29th, where we'll have a keynote speech by Craig Thompson, as well as other notable speakers, which include Associate Vice Chancellors Monique Dozier, Johnny Cruz, Denise Woods, head basketball coach Mike McPayo, as well as our very own Miriam Lamb. Uh, folks, you want to bookmark this, save the date, uh, put it on your calendars, and inform your teams. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic conference. It's, uh, uh, we're excited to, excited to host it, so please mark your calendars. I'd like to give a special note of gratitude and recognition to our exceptional Staff Assembly Executive Board, who work tirelessly each day to help, uh, help advance uh, the efforts led by Staff Assembly and um, give the best experience for our staff, and without which none of what we do would be possible. So please join me in uh, giving a round of applause to our <laughs> Staff Assembly Board. I should note that Sarah Dillon, she's back there. Uh, she is our newest board member, uh, joining us as Director of Administration, so I want to make sure that we acknowledge her as well. It should be a full hour, so let's get started, shall we? Our featured speaker today is, our fe featured speaker today is Miriam Lamb, who serves as UC Riverside's Vice Chancellor and Chief Diversity Officer. In her role, Miriam advises the leadership, leadership team, including the chancellor, on all issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and sets the vision and course for positioning UCR as a national leader in reimagining re diversity in higher education. 
She has a wide range of initiatives and, and committees that address DEI, partners with campus and community stakeholders, to advance UCR's diversity mission and represents UCR at the, at the state system and national levels. But that's her official bio, folks. What you also need to know is that Miriam is a strong supporter of staff assembly uh, and one of the few leaders that I know who goes out of her way uh, to consult with us on matters that affect staff. She's generous with her time, a deep listener, and goes out, out of her way to include all the voices around her. So please join me in welcoming Miriam. and all this leadership I've gotten to know and all the rank-and-file staff over the years. I have to say I was much leaner in that photo six years ago. <laughs> I'm not catfishing you all, I swear. Um, so, I, you know, I was asked to give a, a sort of administrative update on DEI partnerships and projects and initiatives, but I realized I don't think I've ever addressed staff assembly as a whole in the seven years I've been in this position. And so, there was a lot of ground to cover, um, and I was trying to, you know, uh, align it with our uh, strategic plan principles, right? And so, um, financial stability, resiliency, and sustainability is the first area. And over the last seven years, we've really built and continue to build um, a lot of DEI and climate infrastructure for the campus um, over these years. And you'll probably have seen a lot of this in the compliance arena, right? Um, uh, uh, different um, uh, investigative offices and um, forms of accountability and such. And a lot of the work we do in our office is climate facing and so much of that uh, requires partnership with staff assembly. And so most of the things we've done um, over these last years have been around uh, staff, but also faculty and student recruitment, retention, right, with um, uh, um, the, around the issues of collegiality and retention uh, specifically for staff um, and professional development. And so in the years when our HR has been leaner, right, or um, has undergone some uh, structural changes there, we've tried to partner with Staff Assembly to work on projects that, that we could do however lean we were. And many of these um, initiatives have been system-wide as well as campus-specific. So. Um, you all know the different um, system-wide initiatives at um, revising our anti-discrimination policy. So it's now undergoing its um, final stages of review and it's meant to more consistently align with Title IX mandates, right? So that um, the other forms of discrimination beyond gender discrimination and sexual violence, sexual harassment are treated in the same, you know, timely and comprehensive manner. And so um, along with that in terms of professional development and climate issues within the units. We've um, historically created faculty equity advisors programs and the staff assembly and system-wide as well as on our campus have been um, very vigilant about encouraging staff equity advisors that live outside the academic units and in other divisions that may not have uh, guidance and resources and um, counsel when they do need um, climate-related uh, um, uh, needs and, and uh, consult um, and counsel. So uh, we're working on building that out system-wide as well as on our campus. Um, system-wide is also working on creating an anti-racism model that might uh, be mandated system-wide um, or made available so that individual campuses and constituency units can then implement them. At UCR, our students very much wanted a specific anti-blackness module. So um, Megan Rush in our office, who uh, you may know from the LGBT Resource Center, but is our uh, now DEI training coordinator, um, is working with the students on creating that, uh, but in a way that would make it available to staff and faculty as well. And so um, we've been partnering with HR on, um, not just HR and APO, but also Student Affairs and Grad Division on onboarding at the adding DEI component uh, awareness um, knowledge understanding at the moment of onboarding right so that anyone new to the campus um, will will have a basic uh, baseline foundational knowledge and awareness of, of what we want our climate to be um, you know Agam told me that the UC system has this new growing our own campaign where it's about pipeline building from our undergrads to 
uh, become our grad students, to become our staff members, to be uh, continue into the senior leadership and uh, the professoriate and professional schools and such. And so along with that, um, HR has designed a new new managers training program, right? So um, thanks to Alex and Shauna and others who have been working on that. I think we heard during the campus culture task force that a lot of the challenges in our staff units were um, good folks who got promoted to new management positions who now are overseeing staff that they th never really were formally trained to oversee and some of that affects how you help your staff when they have needs, right? You, you don't always know the resources to go to, you don't always know how to communicate effectively. Sometimes you rely on HR and that can throw a very legal you know, component into the communication that makes it stressful for the employee and such and so. Some of these new um, initiatives are meant to kind of help um, smooth and improve those um, moments of leadership transition um, for the units as well as for the, the new managers. Um, a lot of HR and I, Alex and I, our, our units have been trying to cross train our staff so that um, our staff are more uh, fluent in staff needs and um, his staff are more fluent in DEI inclusivity issues across the board. Um, belonging justice and so um, along with that you know one of our most successful programs on campus has been the Chancellor's Making Excellence Inclusive program it's a, been about a 2021 year program uh, designed under my predecessor Yolanda Moses and uh, Yolanda Moses and I think more so a project that Gladys um, um, uh, Brown had uh, sort of created um, and um, we're now parsing out there was also a grad division one that we created about six years ago, and now we're working with the Excite Center to create one specifically for faculty and instructors to address inclusive pedagogy, power dynamics in the classroom, uh, improved uh, holistic ad uh, advising, mentoring, and grading assessment practices, right? Um, Decentering the classroom, all of that. And so we're hoping that we'll further include, because we know staff are often on the front lines when students come to staff to complain about their instructors as well, so thank you for that. Um, the, uh, you, you know historically on campus we've had many different uh, mechanisms for reporting any kinds of climate concerns or issues. We've created one that's a little uh, easier to use and doesn't require you to know exactly what office you need to go to because sometimes a regular rank and file staff member is not gonna know whether to go to employee labor relations for something, to go to the uh, Affirmative Action and Equal Opportunity Office, or uh, uh, depending on who your concern is with, right? Do you have to go to the Senate? Um, um, ombuds uh, more, for more confidential counsel has usually been helpful for guiding, but still it's up to the individual to know what unit, and, and they're not sure if it's something illegal or just inappropriate or unprofessional, and so, um, you may have seen in the provost's recent uh, email that went out that we have a new incident reporting mechanism um, and it's on our website under incident reporting tab and it's um, administered by a small nimble group called the campus climate response group and so if you have a concern uh, you can uh, report it anonymously and create a, you know an unidentifiable gmail address if you want us to re respond and circle back with you or not at all or you can use your name and that will allow us the small group to actually appoint, appoint a, a lead on it and there's accountability because everyone else is also aware of who's the lead and timely response and, and who will and it will get to the right office so that you don't have to determine which office needs to take the lead on the offense, right? Um, so we're hoping that improves. Uh, but this does not replace any of the existing structures. So if you have formal discrimination complaints, still report them at title 9 at ucr.edu. The help.ucr.edu website is a good place to go for guidance if you're not sure about, you know, how long timelines take in each uh, office and such, right? So the chancellor actually had us create that um, because he wanted um, staff to have uh, a one-stop shop to know which you know, what mechanisms they had at their um, uh, reach um, when, when they did um, experience challenges. Over the years, we've actually created a lot of affinity groups. And as you know, affinity groups, um, at staff assembly is actually our largest affinity group. Um, but some of the smaller ones that have um, 
been created over the years. I think the first one we started with an LGBT outlist that was uh, for staff and faculty that um, the LGBT Resource Center had uh, really advocated for. And then BAFASA, our Black Faculty and Staff Association, was probably our next largest. But since then, we have a Latina Chicana staff and faculty group. We have a disability network. Um, we have a, a brand new formerly incarcerated and system impacted FEC um, affinity group for staff and faculty to kind of align with our underground scholars initiative at the undergrad and grad student level. And then we have a new uh, Chinese and Chinese American faculty and staff group as well. So all of these affinity groups that uh, began a couple through HR and then the rest th primarily through our office as a sponsoring website hosting kinds of entities um, have are slowly trying to transition to become more formalized employee resource groups. And UC Office of the President is doing similar um, uh, moves um, and it's requiring a lot of education across the system about what are the differences between uh, a standard affinity group and what does it mean to become an employee resource group, what are the expectations, how do they uh, get built um, and embedded in, in a system, right? Um, but along with these particular affinity groups, we've also, um, the chancellor uh, has created a lot of new uh, committees that, um, you know, we feel have been beneficial for the campus. Um, we've always had uh, community advisory groups, right, that include staff and uh, faculty, but are primarily community members. Um, mostly uh, racial, ethnic specific, uh, African American, a Chicano Latino, a Native American, and an LGBT uh, group. Um, but in addition to that, he's created um, a Chancellor's Advisory Committee on the Status of Women that uh, aligns with the system-wide uh, Advisory Committee on the Status of Women. And it's always, these groups are always um, co-chaired by one staff member and one faculty member so that there isn't differential treatment and, and a perceived hierarchy. And then we created, the chancellor charged us with creating the chancellor's advisory committee on disability inclusion. And I, Erica is on that committee, for example, as well. And um, that group is targeting different things each year, but the, for the last few couple years, for example, some of them have been about flexible work schedules, child care, um, uh, mentorship, and, and these are aligned with many of the things that staff assembly have also told us. Um, um, that are important to them. Along with those, we've uh, created uh, committees on free speech and protests, knowing what to do, um, and making resources available, making sure we have multi-tiered response and um, students know how to not get in trouble. Um, our campus safety personnel know when to uh, sort of uh, step step back and, and, and know when to lean in. Um, we also have a very strong HSI, Hispanic Serving Institution, and Anna PZ, Asian American, Native American, Pacific Islander Serving Institution um, committees. We have a smaller HBCU, historically back colleges and universities group that is hoping to work on pipeline building from uh, HBCUs into our graduate programs. Um, so these are some of the uh, committee uh, projects that uh, staff have always been um, helpful and, and supportive and, and led uh, um, us on. But some of the things that I think you all work so hard at, um, not just the events, I know as regular fi faculty here over the last 21 years, I always thought, I don't know if that I wanna see my colleagues in their bathing suits at the student rec pool, right? <laughs> so I always wondered why our staff wanted to do that. But uh, now I see a lot of it as community building and camaraderie, and it makes a lot more sense now. But the other things you do that are less odd to me, <laughs> like staff pantry, the pop-ups, the once a month staff pantry pop-ups where you're really trying to affect basic needs and food insecurity and housing insecurity. You know, historically, um, the role of higher education and higher ed administration has not been to address these kinds of things. And I think in late stage global capitalism and the defunding of higher ed, a lot of um, the world and higher ed no differently has had to rely on global volunteerism. And so the kind of care and volunteerism that you all contribute to, not just in the donations, but in working those events um, really is, is you know, doing the deed for society as a whole. And so um, 
I really want to expand, you know, the third tenet of the strategic plan is expanding the visibility and influence of UCR locally, nationally, and globally. And so some of the things our office is trying to do that the chancellor had wanted me to do is to co-write pieces in national venues like the Chronicle of Higher Education, diversity journals, and all, you know. And so I would invite staff assembly to co-write a, a, a couple pieces with me featuring some of the things you've done for the campus in for higher education in a meaningful way that has not historically been seen or appreciated or valued, right? So um, I'll just end by saying that, you know, I have to thank you all um, over the last seven years. Uh, you know I just had my five-year review, even though it's been seven years, and um, I couldn't have gotten through those seven years without staff assembly because you've all volunteered your time and resources and labor free labor to our office in so many ways. We wouldn't even have a website without um, a few of you who uh, do not work anywhere near our units but offered to create our website pages for us and uh, teach us how to do things. You've uh, served on all our, you know, 20 committees and task forces we created over the last seven years. And so that, you know, the collective struggle but also the kind of solidarity and camaraderie and commiseration that you've been here for, uh, I'm really grateful to, and I think our campus is really grateful to beyond um, our own staff and our department. So thank you. Miriam Lam, everybody. Thank you, Miriam, for your uh, wise counsel, as always, and being a partner for Staff Assembly. We really appreciate it. I'd like to welcome our President-elect Erica Leone to give the next update. Hello, everyone. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see so many faces. Some I recognize, some I don't, so I hope I get to know all of you very soon. I'm Erica Leone. I'm an HR business partner for Chaz, business partner. Um, and I'm also the VP for Staff Assembly, President-elect. So um, I'll be seeing a lot more of you, or you'll be seeing a lot more of me in the year to come. So do we like staff assembly? Is staff assembly cool? You guys like them? Yeah. All right, I'll accept that. So <laughs> one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is obviously, you know, staff assembly, we have a board that we uh, is made up of amazing volunteers every year that they give a lot of time, they give a lot of resources and support. They do it unpaid and they do it because they truly care about our staff. They wanna make a difference. They wanna make this a special place for each and every one of you. And they wanna make sure that all of us as staff feel valued, feel special, and feel important, and that we're reminded that this is a place that we, we need all of you, we want you to be. So staff assembly is critical. It's been amazing, an amazing opportunity for me. Um, I've been the director of professional development, this year VP, next year president. It's an awesome opportunity to really help you get out of your box, um, get out of your bubble. I was very comfortable in my bubble, which I'm sure many of you are, but it's a great way to break out and, and meet more people and really get involved in the campus that we love. So I wanted to mention that we currently have um, our elections open for the coming year that starts July 1. So the nominations are open until March 3rd. You may have seen the, the nomination call go out in our newsletter. Please feel free to nominate yourselves or if you know an amazing staff member that you think this would be a great fit for or that they'd, you know, they'll bring them out of their shell as well. Please feel free to nominate them, but talk to them. Let them know you're doing that. Um, and we have elections March 13th through 17th. So we have tons of positions. We've had amazing people in these positions, even some of our past presidents. Julie Salgado, I don't know where she is, but I would die without Julie Salgado. She's such an amazing person with a golden heart. She's been doing events for us. We have amazing marketing people, um, outreach people, professional development, and all of these, again, they're great opportunities to get involved. So I encourage you guys, yes, it's a commitment of time, but it is so worth it, and it is such a valuable way to really contribute to the campus. So please take a look at our website. We have the little link here for you, and to those of you on Zoom, please take a look because you're you're already there at your computer, so we look forward to seeing lots and lots of nominations. Um, I also want to talk to you guys about our volunteer opportunities. As Agam mentioned, we have our huge staff conference coming up, which we are so proud of our staff conference. This is our third year. It's um, really focused on staff. It's hosted for staff, by staff, um, and it's a great opportunity to just take some courses that you're interested in, whether it be for pushing your own career forward, whether it be for creating 
you know, a way to really care for your own mental health and self-care, or even a way of just nurturing your, your current environment and making sure it's a respectful one. So there's so many great opportunities and great classes that will be coming. But with that, we need lots and lots of volunteers. So the conference is online, just as it was this, the past two years. We'll be hosting it on Crowdcast. And what that means is each of our speakers, we're going to need someone to introduce our speakers and someone just to kind of be there in the background to help drive Crowdcast. We'll show you how to do it. We will not leave anyone hanging. But it's a great opportunity to get involved, and we really need your help. So if you're interested, you can go to our Staff Assembly website to get involved. Just click there. Or you can reach out to our amazing outreach, um, sorry, recognition director, Brianna Morales, and she can assist you with getting involved. Next slide, please. All right, so some of our upcoming events. One that's not on here, as you guys came in, you may have seen Penny at our front door. Penny is our amazing host of Virtual Bingo. Has anybody attended Virtual Bingo over the last? Yes, do we like it? Is it fun? You guys are so quiet. <laughs> it's super fun. So we actually have an upcoming bingo session um, coming up this Friday. We have one during the lunch hour, and we also have one hosted by myself and Tanya Wine, which we are super goofy, super silly. We encourage you to make fun of us because we just want to make it a fun experience for you. So that's coming up this Friday. And if you'd like to sign up for that, which it's not here, um, Penny has an awesome one of those super cool QR codes right at the front where you can scan it, and it'll register you for that. So also, we have so many things coming up. As I mentioned, the staff conference, March 28th and 29th. Our website is now live, so if you'd like to take a look and just save the dates, please do that, and I encourage you to. We're also going to have headshots, just as we did last year with our one of our um, awesome partners, Carrie Rosma. She's the same photographer we, was, we used last year, so she did a great job. We'll have three different dates, April 12th, May 2nd, and May 23rd, for you to co come and get professional headshots. So please save the dates, and you'll see the times to sign up very soon. Um, we're also going to have Coffee and Donuts, um, hosted by several of our campus leaders. Sorry, I need my water, but I didn't bring it, of course. And um, a big hit from last year and the year before, we had our Thank Goodness for Staff Week, April 24th and 28th. We did Build a Scotty, which was a huge hit for us. So now this year, we're going to have all kinds of, see, Julie Salgado. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> That's what I mean, you guys. She's just like a little angel. I love her. So <laughs> thank you, Julie. So thank goodness for staff week. We will have another Build-A-Bear session since it was such a hit last year. We're going to have different animals for you to create so you can have a little collection for yourselves. Um, we're going to have therapy fluffies, so those little puppies that just let us pet them and get all of our stress out because we have stress. We know this. And then we'll have all kinds of fun virtual events as well on the, the beginning of the week and the end of the week, so we'll get our virtual employees involved as well. So please mark your calendars for that. Um, we have our Lunch and Learn coming up next week with ABC Denise Woods and Chief Talbot, so February 22nd from 12 to 1. We encourage you to sign up. They're going to be talking about all the new programs and resources, health, health and safety on campus, so it'll be a really great opportunity to learn more. Um, and then UCR Advocacy Day, March 7th, is coming up. Agam and our past president, Jeff Chereau, will be representing us at um, the Capitol, and our dean will also be there from Chaz, so we're super excited. So um, they do a lot for us. They really make sure that they put our name out there and they advocate for staff and the needs of our university. So more news to come on that. And then finally, Staff Pantry. Some of you um, have been able to attend. It's a great event. We have one coming up this Friday. So if you're able, it's at the Roundabout by Pentland Hills. Please come out. You get um, a bag of groceries, dry goods. It's a, it's a really great resource for our staff. So I encourage you guys to share the word and to please come out. And next slide. We wanted to share our most recent and our first in-person Get Recognized slide. This was hosted by our own Brianna Morales, who's very shy. She's in the back room. So I encourage every one of you to stop and say hi to her. <laughs> Give her a big hug, high five, whatever. But she did an amazing job. This was a great opportunity for us to recognize staff across campus. And Get Recognized is a great program for you to recognize each other as staff. So if you're just really impressed with one of your coworkers out there, it doesn't have to be a supervisor or manager. It doesn't have to be you know, someone that's been here years. It could just be someone that, wow, you did a really great job and you made me feel special or the work you did was incredible. Let's recognize them. Please feel free to, um, to nominate them. So if we go to the next slide, um, it'll tell you all the dates and all the information you need to nominate for our next ceremonies. And we will be having a spring in-person ceremony as well. 
as you can see from those slide, the slide before, we had lots of fun at our last ceremony, and we provided free food, because staff assembly and food, we gotta keep those two together. So recognize each other, pat each other on the back. You guys do tons of incredible work. We appreciate you and appreciate each other. So it's a great opportunity to do that. And I will go to our next slide. Sorry, I'm going super fast because I'm trying to keep us on time. If you'd like to stay connected with Staff Assembly, if you are not already, these are all the links and all of the websites that you can do that. Please do, please sign up for our monthly newsletter. It's a great way to know what we're doing, what's coming up, what events we have. It's a great way to get involved if you wanna volunteer. It's just fun, we try to have fun because you guys, we are all so serious in our jobs and we do so much work um, for, our, for our departments. It's a great way to just break away and take a breath. So please sign up and hope to see you all at our next events. And with that, I'll call Mr. Gom back up. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Erica. Uh, this is the best part of the ceremony here, folks, uh, where we uh, get to celebrate all of you. Before I do that, I want to uh, give a, uh, uh, a nod to all the uh, staff assembly presidents and board members that have served before uh, this uh, this uh, board here, so I see a number of you here, presidents, board members, uh, please give it up for all of them here. All right, so this is the way it's gonna work. We're gonna call your names up. Uh, if you are getting your five-year awards, please look for Julie Salgado back there. Uh, line up against the wall as uh, we call your name up. Please come up to the podium. We invite uh, Vice Chancellor Miriam Lamb up here as well. And once you uh, come up, shake hands there, we ask that you stay by the step and repeat uh, next to Scotty, and then we will take a group photo of the five years, 10 years, et cetera. Got it? So those of you that are standing in the back, if anyone would like a seat, there's actually two open rows right up here. If you'd like to sit down, please feel free to come on up. All right, let's get started. Five years, here we go. Next slide, please. Nina Aguila. Alex Amaral. Katie Avila. John Batres. Jerry Bamadi. <laughs> Deborah Breeze. Michelle Burrows. Christine Cha. Eric Chong. Matthew Klaus. Cindy Collins. Blanca Contreras Vijegas. Gibrant Cunningham. Jason Daly.
Gregory Garcia. Roxanne Gerber. Michelle Gomez. Natasha Gonzalez. Amy Gonzalez. Ashley Gordon. Mary Hamer. Ricardo Hart. Adriana Hernandez. Anna Herrera. Jose Jimenez Flores. Garrett Kelly. Michael Kelly. Judy Koburin. One son, Kim. Kara Longton. Yen Ma. Bahad Mantara. Deidre May. Kimberly McDade. Donna Mobley. Margaret Montavan. Patty O'Leary. Alexandra Orzosco. Renata Palmer. Huen Park. Aaron Parks. Karina Quesada. Jillian Ramirez. Didi Rivera. Rachel Rodriguez. Ali Sadat. Grace Saunders. Kate Seo. Oscar Serena Ortiz. Carrie Sosha. Shalee Stewart. Edith Torres. Samuel Tran. Nancy Vasquez. Jessica Weber. Daphne 
Zamora. Christine Zapera. Congratulations to the five year recipients. Congratulations, five years. That's amazing. Time flies when you're having fun, right? So now we're going to move on to our 10-year recipients. I hope we have lots and lots of 10-year recipients here. If you, any 10 years, come on up and meet Julie on the side, and we'll get started. Lily Barger. <laughs> Beth Beatty. <laughs> Sherry Black. <laughs> Angela Cherry. <laughs> Melissa Cordoba Garanza. Stephen Day. Delon Din. Kristen Irving. Robert Godoy. Mark Jones. I'm so excited that Mark was here. Joshua Kashima. Ryan Lazar. Misty Madero. Steven Martinez. Deborah Manili, Lorena Velasquez, Isidra Villalobos Martinez. Congratulations to all of our 10 years. All right, 15 years, here we go. Stephen Acosta. Edwin Arismendi. Tracy Avery.
Pradeep Bagh. Tiffany Carter. <laughs> Jeffrey Clauser. <laughs> Bracken Daly. Zuma Diaz. Vincent Farinelli. Dorothea Ford. Sammy Fiedrich. John Stewart Gonzalez. Clark Hapman. Alicia Jeanette. Bertine Jimenez Salgado. Nancy Marr. Maricela Martinez, Amanda Mason, Ryan McDougal, Shauna Nunez, Rodolfo Osegueda. <laughs> Allison Palmer. <laughs> Tara Pestucha. <laughs> Ricardo Salinas. <laughs> Brian Sundstrom. <laughs> Iris Tam. Daisy Vaca. Congratulations to all the 15 year recipients. Our 20 year recipients, come on over to where Julie Salgado is since she's famous now. She was before. All right. Jose Berriu Vives. Troy Bohannon. Carter.
Susan Chevry. Penny Abina. Franco, Sean Gill, Lupe Gomez, Alisa Gutierrez. Toshio Ishida. John Johnson. Miriam Lamb. Risa Lau. Jorge Macias. Diana Mariquin. Teresa Salvato. Jolene Sedita. <laughs> Susan Tomlinson. Joseph Ibarra, Margarita Yonizawa. Congratulations to all of our 20 year. All right, 25 years of service. Here we go. Deanna Alvaron. Kevin Brokenball. Leslie Bouchon. Angela Calderon. Ross French. Edith Gorder, Cheryl Murdoch, Irene Tanaka, Antoinette Tony. Congratulations to our 25 year recipients.
Okay, if I could have our 30 year recipients come on over. Congratulations, 25. That's amazing. All right. Susan Brown. Israel Flites. <laughs> Wayne Kanemoto. <laughs> Brandon McKee. Wendy Mello. Paul Murray. <laughs> Marlene Laura. Marion's telling them none of them look old enough to be here for that long. <laughs> Congratulations, all our 30 years. Thirty-five years of service, folks. Here we go. Karen Naples. <laughs> Kathy Red. Congratulations to our 35 year recipients. <laughs> All right, 40 years, here we go. And when? Congratulations to our 40 year recipients. A total, total years of service, 1,855 years of service. Please give it up for everybody. All right, folks, so for the next section here, if there are any retirees, please come on up. I will announce your names here. Retires, here we go. Diane Thomas, 10 years of service. Thomas Barnett. Maria Blanco. Cynthia Cardenas. Oscar Fajardo. 
Elazar Garcia. Frederick Haman. Karen Hernandez. Noem Montemayor. Nina Quash. Ray Varela. Paul DeLay. Leticia Gomez. Congratulations to all of our retirees. I'd like to now invite past president and events director Julie Solgado to give out some raffle prizes. All right, I know we're af after time, but we do have prizes. We want to thank well, um, wellness, Mr. Hung Wu in the back. He donated a Fitbit. So let's see who gets to win this Fitbit. Number, last three numbers, two, six, one. Two, six, one. You have to be here, so if we don't. Okay, next. Okay. Two, two, two. You Winner. Are. Next, we have a lunch with Miss Miriam Lamb. You and a guest get to have lunch with her. But there's, it's scheduled time, so you have to be available when she's available. <laughs> so let's see let's, the lucky winner. Number 205. 205. All right, Sue. Congratulations. There you go. And then it tells you instructions on how to contact. Yeah. <laughs> And then from staff assembly, we have a bear, a mug, and a mask. This one goes to 258. 258? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Yay! And next, we have five dining gift cards. Um, dining gift cards, yes. Not dining dollars. Dining <laughs> gift cards. We're going to do um, so five different winners. You do have to sign for these since we use university funds. You have to sign a, a prize form. First one goes to 234. 234, all right. Next one, 290. 290, anyone, anyone? No? Okay, next. 254. 254, anyone, anyone? <laughs> Yes. How many is that so far? Just two? All right. And 249. 249? All right. 193? 193. All right. The last one goes to 214. 214. All right. Thank you so much. That concludes our event for today. Is there anything else? Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. And we'll hope to see you at the next staff assembly event.